Welcome to the TQE program on how to teach students the SQC, uh, particularly the PDCA. My name is Andre Lim. I'm the director for the Lanka Institute of Quality Management. What I hope to do today uh, in this session is to explain to you how you can teach the PDCA to your SQC, which is Student Quality Control Circle. Now, the PDCA, which stands for the Plan Do Check Action, is a very um, big project. You know, it's a big application for you know, for industry and for the uh, organizations which is professional. Therefore, is a is a serious uh, method of of uh, doing projects, and therefore is needed for the students to learn about um, problem solving using the PDCA. Therefore, it is my um, thinking uh, that students should use PDCA a uh, method because that is the industrial standard. You know, whether you use uh, Six Sigma or, or, or TQM, in the end, we always depend on PDCA. Now, I also want to tell you that there are other methods of problem solving, which is why I, I'm saying that we should do it uh, slowly. We, we, when we start the PDCA, uh, teaching the, the children the PDCA, um, we will try to not to load them directly first. What is the PDCA? You know, because it's so complex and so big, it may be too daunting for them. Then they may start to lose interest. So I'm thinking that for, for uh, you to help the student, try uh, a small step, a small baby step, which is what we call a creative problem solving, CPS. And then later on, you move them slowly to the PDCA. Uh, we have seen this in some of the schools. They have do been doing it this way here. And I think that's a very good idea. Uh, uh, many, many schools have been doing it like this. Uh, if some, of, some of them have tried to do the PDCA. Okay, some children, they, they, they have no problems. You know, you just teach them the PDCA, they, they will grasp it straight away. But some children, they may have some problems. So it depends on the age. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think age is really a problem. You know, we, we do it for six years old or seven years old. They can do the PDCA. So then again, it depends on the environment which they have been brought up. So mind you, the most important is to get the children to be interested. So don't try to put too much pressure on them. Same thing for the cause and effect diagram. If you have if they are brought up in a home where problems are regularly regularly discussed uh, and causes are uh, always mentioned, it is easy for them to draw a fishbone diagram, no problem. But because it is a kind of um, difficult for them to associate problems with causes, maybe it's easier you start with a mind map, you know, associate things with other things, you know, so that you can start learning, children can start learning about grouping of ideas. So in this presentation, uh, <coughs> in this part one of the presentation, we will look at CPS before PDCA. I have put up some slides down here just for us to think about thinking, thinking about thinking, metacognition. If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change the way you think about it. That's a good adage. But do people think? Can people think? Look at this photograph here. The pavement is wet, has wet cement. And the bicycle rider rode his bicycle onto this wet pavement. And then he continued walking on the wet cement rather than walk, walking on the side. Because in his thinking, that's what pavement are used for. The pavement is for you to ride your bicycle and for you to walk. If it's, uh, if it's wet, he still walk on it. This is what we call one-track mentality. One-track thinking is a big cause, cause of failure in thinking. How about these people here? They're having a grand time, big party. And what are they doing? They're putting the adapter, the electrical adapter, as you can see here in the pool. And this man is in the pool. They are drinking their vodka and brandy and so on with slippers as a flotation device to hold up this electrical cord. Now, these are not properly stuck on. So you can just imagine if it falls down, everybody dies. 
you see how they take this in to the side of the flexible pool. So waves, if there's a big wave, somebody splash in, somebody forget to do uh, to think to remember that this is just a simple floating device, this can come apart. What happens when people don't think? This is an electric kettle, and what did this person do? Put it onto an a gas stove. Some people think that they think, but they don't think. This man thinks that he's making himself beautiful. He must have spent a lot of money and a lot of pain to make himself beautiful. And some people think that it's funny to be not to think properly here. I mean, which parents, which adult has given this child the cigarette and the mesh box? He, he must be thinking that it's such a funny thing to see the child doing it doing it, but he's just purely not thinking properly. Uh, Albert Einstein says, two things are infinite in the universe. The universe <laughs> and human stupidity. So helping students to think correctly is the most important task for teachers. To solve problems, we need to think. There are three ways to be engaged in thinking. One is the logical reasoning. I'll give you an example. Uh, Sunil and Amante have two daughters. Each daughter has a brother. How many people are there in the family? Okay, so that is the logical reasoning. Uh, mathematical, mathematical reasoning, there are some pigs in the ch and chickens in the farmyard. A worm counts there are 15 animals and 48 legs. How many pigs are there? So we can solve that using a mathematical equation. And lateral thinking is another way of thinking. I need to iron a shirt, but I have no iron. So what do we do? Iron with something else. Don't just have a one-track mind like the bicycle rider. There are four phases of creative thinking. The explorer, in the first play, play, uh, stage, look for ideas. Then the artist, he plays with the idea, you know, and then the next phase, you become a judge. Then you select the best idea. And then finally, you become the warrior, the fourth phase. You champion the best idea. You implement it. The biggest problem to creativity is getting it in the wrong order. The problem is that people like to judge first. The first idea come up, people judge, oh, this is the best idea I've heard because maybe it's their own idea. So this is how you squeeze up all the ideas and you end up doing the poor ideas. The way that we solve problems is very important because different problems, different levels of problems, we solve problems differently. So I'm going to end by with this slide here. If we have problems, simple problems that you know the solutions, it's easy for you to solve because you already know it. You know, human beings think in terms of patterns. If it's by investigation, it, it's a bigger problem. Okay, you need to explore, you need to get new information and so on. But if it's a project, then it becomes even more uh, complicated because it may involve other processes and other people as well. There are lots of risks, there are time scales that need to be done and so on. Guess which one you use for the PDCA? That's right, projects. So if you want to start teaching children, the students, how to solve problem and jumping to project, that might be too big. Start with the problem first. So this is um, how we should help children to solve problems and then how to think. So that's all the time we have for this session. I'll see you on in the next session. Thank you very much.